Hi gang, so we're going to start talking about how to work inside of three dimensions with your double staves. Now, normally you're already working a little bit inside of three dimensions. After all, when you're performing your anti-spins, for example, in, uh, in wall plane like this, um, your staves are a little bit in front of you. And of course, when we perform any kind of move in wheel plane, such as this hybrid right here, uh, we're also working in kind of a context where we have one staff on one side of us and the other staff on the other side of us. But what I'm really talking about here is doing things that actually engage the audience in a more 3D kind of fashion, coming at them or going away from them and breaking back and forth between these two ideas, right? Um, so this is going to be just an introductory side of things using the, the information that we already have in terms of timing and direction and all that um, and give you guys a couple of drills to begin playing around in 3D land. Now, um, there are some more advanced ways that we can explore this that I'll get to in later videos, but for today's purposes, I wanted to keep it relatively simple. So let's just start off with a simple exercise of beginning to explore 3D, wherein I've got one of my staves going anti-spin here, and when I get to one side of it, I'm going to take my anti-spin across the horizontal plane rather than the vertical plane. What am I talking about? Well, when we're playing around with anti-spins, we're really thinking about hitting four different points. There's a point to my right, a point that's top side, a point to my left, and a point that's straight down, yeah? Roughly working inside of a diamond. We're going to add two points now. These points are straight towards the audience slash camera, and then straight back away from the audience slash camera. This roughly creates a uh, what we would call an octahedron around the body. It's a platonic solid that, if you can think of two pyramids that essentially have their flat sides that have been glued together, it's an eight-sided figure, but what's really important is that there are six possible points in it that you can reach for, and each of these points is connected together with a line. So, for example, I'm just playing around with all of the points on one plane right now, but if I want to, I can stop right here and decide that I want to play around with the point that's towards the audience, like that, sticking out my pinky end and then pulling the pinky end straight back at myself before continuing around with that anti-spin. Yeah. I could also, if I so chose, stop at the bottom point right here, push the thumb end out towards the audience, pull it back towards me, and continue on my merry way once again. Yeah? So, getting both of the stabs involved, we want to start drilling this in the different timing and direction combinations. So, for example, I'm going to start off in together same, playing around with anti-spins here in wall plane. I'm going to stop the two stabs over here on my right-hand side, stick my pinky ends out towards the audience, stick my thumb ends back out towards my left hand side and drop around. I can also do the same operation on the other side, stopping here on my left, sticking my pinkies out, pulling them back towards me, and continuing on my merry way, like so. I can also stop them straight down below, pop my thumb ends out, and then back up and out to the side. Or I can stop them top side, stick my thumb ends out, bring them down to the bottom, and again, continue on my merry way. So a drill that you can start to do with this is actually to take side side, go back and forth between them, then go top bottom, go back and forth between them, and then to try doing each one alternating, say taking it across the side, top bottom, across the other side, and from the bottom to the top, if that's not too terribly confusing. Essentially what that is, is when I go to my right side, I'm carrying it across to my left. When I get around to the top, I'm taking it down. When I get around to my left, I'm taking it across to my right, and by the time I get all the way to the bottom, I'm taking it up to the top. In other words, I get three points around the edge of that diamond before I do a plane shift. That plane shift takes me across to the opposite point, and I continue on my merry way. Make sense? Hopefully so, because now we're going to do it in the other timing and direction combinations. Oh, and one other quick note. Also do this with isolations. Dragging the staves across in all these same timing and direction combinations, yeah? Boom. Okay, so uh, in together opposites, <laughs> this is going to be a fun trip, because we're working in a place where our arms cross each other now. So again, when I get my, uh, my pinky ends out towards the sides, I'm going to push my thumb ends towards the audience, and then cross my arms, pulling my pinky ends out away from myself, and I can carry it on through. I can also do this from a position where my arms are crossed, and push thumb ends out, pull them back in, and I'm back where I started. 
I can also do this when the two staves are pointed up, in which case I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing that I did in uh, Together Same, where I'm pushing uh, the pinky ends out towards the audience and then back towards me, around, or from down here, pushing pinky ends out and then up. Yeah? Um, so once again, do this as a drill, wherein when they're straight out to the sides, go to cross, bring them down through. When they get to top, push them away, bring them on out, wait till they're crossed, bring them on out, and whew, push them on through. When they get to the bottom, push them to the top, and back through. Yeah? Clear as mud? I hope so. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, there's split time opposites. And, of course, learn that previous one with your isolations as well. Boom. Boom. Er, boom. And boom. Um, split time opposites. Starting to drill this is actually pretty easy because especially if you're going from the vertical points, it's just a matter of, okay, I'm pushing out to my right, pushing out towards the audience pushing out towards my left, pushing out towards the audience each time, right? Adding in the horizontal movement is just a matter of pulling that back in from our um, together same operation where we've got both thumb ends out, turn the pinky ends towards the audience, come back over to my left hand side, come around on my left hand side, jet out the pinky ends towards the audience, and then out to the side, so on and so forth, right? Again, you want to try to do this operation so that, say, I am going around like so. When I get to my right side, anti-spin across to my left, come on through. When my left hand is up, push out towards the audience, come on through. When I get to my left hand side, push on out towards the audience, come on through. When I'm top bottom, I push out towards the audience again. Yeah? Easy peasy. Um, split time same direction is another one of those like uh, together same wherein you're really going to find that you're pretty much always doing uh, split time same direction in any given fashion. Uh, as in when you're doing together opposites or uh, split opposites there will be points at which it feels like you're going to go um, in a uh, together same kind of fashion as you're doing these transitions across. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different though. So from oops. My split time, same direction anti-spin right here. I will take this moment when I have one staff forward and one staff back. And, um, <laughs> gotta get it there. I'm gonna shoot my two thumb ends out front and back. This is the first time we've used that back point. And then my pinkies back out front and back. And again, return to these anti-spins right here. Stop. And one quick note on doing this is whichever hand is forward on this, you're going to want to make sure that that thumb end is above your shoulder rather than below it. And thumbs go out, thumbs return in, I'm back to my anti-spins, thumbs go out, thumbs go in, back to my anti-spins, thumbs go out, thumbs go in, back to my anti-spins, thumbs go out, thumbs go in, back to my anti-spins. When I'm top bottom, likewise, it will be... Um, Pinky's out, pinky's back in, and I'm back. Um, pinky's out, pinky's back in, and I'm back. Pinky's out, pinky's back in, and I'm back. Now, you may be realizing that there are possibilities for going back and forth between t different timing and direction styles uh, throughout these patterns. Like, for example, when I'm doing this split time same direction pattern right here, when I'm top bottom, I can just as easily bring both ends towards the audience and both ends away from the audience to go into split opposites for a second. That's totally legit. It's also a possibility when I'm doing split opposites like this that I could say take it into a split time same direction place for a moment rather than pushing out in split opposites, right? All the lessons that you've learned so far about doing transitions between different timing and directions will totally work here. All you need to do is just shift which plane you happen to be working in, right? So I know this is a lot, and especially this is a lot to drill, but it's really, really, really going to help you out in exploring all the different ways that you can transition between these different planes. And quite frankly, it just looks really cool. So um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will be back with another tutorial for you in another two weeks. Peace. This video was made possible thanks to the kind contributions of these folks right here. 
Special thanks to Sean, Prisna, Kiro, and Firefly for your very generous support. This video channel is a one-man operation. Help me to keep on making these videos by visiting drexfactor.com slash support, where you can get your name in the credits or choose from a variety of other rewards and help me to continue to make the videos that I love. Thanks for watching. Oh,